Um, okay, so we're we're recording now. I um, uh, sounds like we'll we'll actually have a, a short call today, um, Bernard. You 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 just have a short battery life, and you're on the road, which is um, fine from my perspective. We can we can uh, do another one of these sometime soon. I'm I'm actually not happy at all with the state of the um, uh, code that I put together today and the demo that I'm going to do. It's it's just it's just far too raw. Uh, I wanted to to spend some more time with this, but I just haven't had time. So, nevertheless, it's still probably worth doing this, and that's why I wanted to kind of um, accelerate getting something together just to swap notes and and uh, and get on the same page about this. So, with all disclaimers aside, I'll just uh, jump in from my side, try to be as quick as possible, and then. Uh, if you guys have any time to to share your side, uh, like what you've run into around um, uh, running this headlessly and so on, problems and solutions there, great. If we don't have time, then uh, we'll just set up another call. Sound okay? Yep. Cool. So okay. So let me let me let me share my screen here. Okay, I, I don't know if this is going to work at all for you, Bernard, being mobile, but um, we're recording anyway. So for the record, yes, I'm um, seeing perfectly. Cool. So we uh, so we had a meeting a few weeks ago, and I I showed this slide, which was really just a, a, a sketch that I did very quickly of you know ch potential changes to the kind of overall architecture of this, and and it um, relevant to this call, it had this idea of embedding an RPC server. Uh, into this core, such a BISC core can be run headlessly, just in daemon mode, think BISC D, right? Uh, and then, you know, any any number of applications can, can of course, talk to that, that running daemon. Uh, and among those would be, uh, naturally, in my mind, trading bots, right? There's sort of no uh, clear reason. Um, and this is probably subject to discussion, but there's no clear reason for me that, uh, or, or advantage that somebody writing a trading bot in say Python would want to consume uh, like a, an HTTP API if they're running that bot, uh, if they're building it in Python and they've got a running this client right over here, why wouldn't you want to, you know, Python bindings, strongly typed, generated stubs, just all the reasons that people run RPC, um, you know, based code elsewhere in Bitcoin land, and lightning land. Um, I don't see why we shouldn't follow suit here. So that's the, that's the kind of motivation is, you know, let's, let's, um, let's kind of come to the party. Like people expect to talk to, you know, this sort of software in the, in the larger space industry that we're working in. And RPC makes a lot of sense. And this is of course not mutually exclusive with a web API. We need a web API of like, this gRPC stuff that we're, uh, you know, pr that I'm proposing here doesn't work in the browser yet, anyway. So you know, you've you've got to consume uh, something web-based uh, for, say, uh, you know, Ionic-based mobile app like you're working on, Bernard, or uh, anything that's going to need to actually do web stuff. But so again, I'll just try to be super quick since we don't have much time. And that's again the context coming into this. And so I spent you know a day or two just. Uh, getting my head around uh, gRPC and, 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 the, and really the, the motivation here is just strongly, it just happened to be like good timing that I listened to this conversation with, um, with Elizabeth Stark and Andreas um, talking about their own, you know, Lightning Labs own experience uh, in building LND. And I mentioned this on Slack the other day, but I'm just mentioning for the record here. Uh, that they started out with a RESTful API as well and, and, and uh, brought gRPC in at some point, I think fairly early. And these days they just want to do nothing other than work with gRPC and the community has rallied around that. And it's just it's just much better, right? I think for, for all the kinds, most of the kinds of applications you would want to build around the Lightning node, uh, I think are many of the same kinds of classes of applications that you'd want to build around a FISC node. And again, here just you know much stronger programmatic contracts and type safety and code generation and all sorts of good stuff. So, um, so I happened to hear that conversation and really started to spark my my interest in the topic and and gave me that much more kind of confidence that the thought that doing things RPC wise probably makes a lot of sense for us. Uh, anyway, so just to dive in, I spent a, a couple of days playing around with uh, with the tech and prototyping something and as unhappy as I am with what I'm about to show you, it'll still give you the, the um, contours of it. 
I'll actually start with um, talking about the command line interface. And this is something that I find um, um, important for a number of reasons. And I think actually really strategic from a, from a kind of, um, uh, it's almost from a developer marketing point of view, if you will, like, like as a, as a developer, like I just, I just want to work with the command line as much as I possibly can. I know other people have different opinions, but like once you have the Unix mindset, you just, you just never care about anything else basically. And, um, and so any sort of tool that presents itself properly as a, as a Unix tool, you know, is already sort of winning the battle in my mind. And so, you know, it's the same thing with just everything in Bitcoin land. Like, like mostly people are trying to follow the Unix philosophy better or worse, I think with different projects, but I, I don't see why this shouldn't be that way as well. And uh, it's just any project I work on, I would want it to be that way. So I think when you get that right, when you get sort of, you know, small things that do one thing well and all that sort of thing, when you get that right and you expose um, command line utilities uh, that behave, you know, idiomatically, like per kind of Unix idioms, then you, you know you've built, you know, something pretty clean uh, that, that can then be built on top of, right? Like, you know, even if it just means piping the output of whatever that command line tool is to something else larger that you're building, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of on the right track. Um, so, so for many reasons, and I guess I won't go into all the details, um, it's important to me that this grow a really proper command line interface. Um, and that's, you know, the very, very early um, uh, attempt at this. So, it's a main method, right? Just like any other. Uh, and I'm using here uh, Pico CLI, you know, the command line interface uh, options, parsing libraries in, in Java are a dime a dozen, and there are many dozens of them. Um, this is actually one that I've used a couple of times before. And uh, one of the reasons that I, or actually the primary reason that I uh, chose it here is because not only is it like really, um, um, uh, how do you say, like um, up to date, like it's actively developed, but it also has a bash command line completion um, generation, script generation built into it, which is huge and which nothing else in Java gets right. There's literally no other framework in Java for options parsing that gets command line completion uh, right at all. Actually, almost none of the other ones even try. And so to have something that does command line completion, it's just, it's just huge. Um, and so that's why, that's why I've chosen that as, you know, in this kind of demo. So let's take a look at it saying, you know, command line run, okay, bisque, this bisque command. And uh, this is, you know, annotation based stuff. It's not the prettiest code in the world to look at, but basically you have this parent command bisque and really think git here, right? Think, think the main command and sub command. So git push, git remote show, right? Like all of these sort of nested subcommands and then possibly options and, and arguments and so on. That's the same way here, right? So imagine uh, BISC that you'd be running at the command line and I'll show you this in a moment. And then balance, just as an example of something that we might do, something you might want to query your running BISC mode about as well, what's my balance, right? So let's actually just do that. If I say BISC, right? And here, let me get this in a way that I can see it myself right so the first thing is you know that's just a script that's sitting out there and then tab tab right so tell me what's available this is all coming from the bash completion script that this that pico cli can generate based on that uh, annotation metadata so i can say balance right and this is probably going to blow up when i run this but it'll be instructive that it blows up because there's nothing running at port 5051 or 50051 which is the default grpc port uh, so there's nothing for this thing to talk to. And this is where I'm, again, quite unhappy with the state of this because as you can see, Core grew a sub project here, CLI, which actually is intentional so far. That looks like the best uh, design decision to me is to have uh, CLI really be part of Core. Uh, I started out with this idea that there would also be a daemon sub project and I've totally changed my mind about this and I definitely don't want to do it this way, but I just didn't have time to do anything else. So it, for the moment, there's this BISC daemon server, but you gotta really just kinda close your eyes and forget about it, because it's, it's the wrong structuring. But in any case, it's got a main method there. And let me just run this real quick. I'll come back to it 
it's going to bind to 50,051, right? We're going to be able to say BISC balance, and it's going to tell me that I have 0 0.2 Bitcoin, right? In my theoretical running BISC client here, this is all just obviously throwaway disconnected code. I haven't run BISC at all. Um, but what's worth looking at here, and this is really the kind of heart of the matter, is that we have, forget this greeter impl, that's just from the demo code that I copied here. It's this wallet implementation, right? So there's, uh, let me show you the protobuf definition. Really the, the gRPC definition, right? So as you guys you know, may have uh, done your own research and figured out, right? We have protobuf message definitions like usual. Again, these are just from the sample. But balance request and balance reply, which is just going to come back with some double value. And then there's this service definition, and that's the you know, gRPC coming into the mix. It's saying yeah, there's a service endpoint that you can call get balance. You give it a balance request object, and it returns a balance reply object. And these, you know, the sort of, um, uh, well, I won't go into this. You can look up how these services work. <laughs> but that's, of course, what then, when it comes to sort of proto C time and, 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 the, and the plugin. So, so you're still running proto C, but you have this gRPC plugin for proto C that has the awareness of how to build these service endpoints. And that's what you see here is this wallet gRPC, wallet impl base, right? So my implementation of basically like, of course, it's ultimately up to us. How do we, how do we back that service, right? How do we actually uh, uh, service the request? And here I'm just doing the dumbest thing possible, which is just hard coding 0.2. Right, but uh, what I actually did earlier, and, and it was just a little too complicated to to get online here for the demo, is um, you know I just went right into the guts of of you know main view or whatever it is in in BISC, where it really the only place that we calculate the available balance is like right in the UI code where we're binding properties and stuff like that, and we basically go ask the wallet service and the you know, transaction service and all this stuff basically add up all the value of all the transactions and format it into you know 0 0.2 btc and that's what shows up in the window uh in the bisq ui right and that's really seriously the one place in the whole world where we calculate your balance so which is okay because that's the only place that we've ever needed to calculate your balance but the idea here is that just step by step function by function uh, need by need, we take that kind of code, which is just scattered all throughout, you know, sort of UI land uh, in many cases, properly abstracted into services, right, in the domain-driven design sense of the word, not in the gRPC sense of the word, but like actually encapsulate that stuff into useful just POJO services, right, uh, and then wrap just as little gRPC code as, as is possible around those services and expose them. Everywhere and anywhere we need to, uh, adding the gRPC you know, service definitions and, and, and in, the, in the proto file and so on. And in this way, it's totally core, right? Like, that's why it lives in core, is core just grows these new service definitions and exposes these new service definitions everywhere it needs to. And we can find out the exact right kind of you know, packaging and naming and architecture and all of that sort of stuff. But, but basically, gRPC services become an integrated part of this core, and they get lit up if you pass the daemon flag or what have you, right? And they, and they don't if you don't, right? Um, and that's, uh, that's probably a pretty good stopping point. So, yeah, uh, questions, thoughts so far about what you see? No, it's very clear. And... Uh... Uh, exactly what uh, we were lacking uh, while uh, creating the API. So we, we will be doing. We we both need to do the same thing here. Yeah. Let's well, drag the logic from the view yeah. into uh, some stateless services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that both the gRPC API and the REST API they need the Java API to be to be refactored and clean. Uh, Think that's that's the need of both of us because so now so in the REST API we have a clause named BISC uh, uh, BISC uh, BISC proxy, proxy yeah. 
which which kind of abstracts all the dirty deeds that you have to do to to get what we need. So yeah, so in essence, we would like to get rid of the BISC proxy and use the the BISC Java yeah, Java API after refactoring, and then and then the REST API can call either directly the Java API or the gRPC API, depending on 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 how we um, depending on so on what's the easiest and also yeah. We also have to make sure if the if the gRPC is part of the core, then it will need to be updated before you release. So yeah, it, it's kind of if the gRPC breaks, then the release isn't really a good release. So yeah, we also have to see how we do that release for management with both the gRPC and the REST API. So yeah. That's that's just for my that's just for my initial thoughts. Uh, but yeah, regarding gRPC, I've also looked at it in the past. Yeah, it's um, it, uh, yeah, it's certainly a nice way to interface. Uh, I do think that uh, to build a, t a trading bot now, it's not uh, it's not a necessity to have the speed of gRPC because BISC itself is also. Uh, quite quite uh, slow in the trading time frames, but uh, yeah, it so was the core thing. Yeah, why not? Uh, With regard to speed, I was going to ask you guys what what sort of um, turnaround time do you see on on your uh, across your typical you know web API calls? Like like the simplest thing that you do, like how long does it take and all that stuff. Um, I, we, we haven't really also measured it yet, but uh, it's it's quite fast. Uh, Bernard, did you uh, do any real other measurements? No, I didn't do any measurements, but just from using it, it's like very fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't see any problems. Just when you place the offer, it might take like one or two seconds because all those asynchronous uh all this being executed there uh those yeah. tasks uh, yeah. that's the only place uh mm -hmm. where it's just but it's not really bad it's not like 10 seconds or something like that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, and i also think go ahead. yeah given the the bisc trading speeds which is yeah i think at most i mean if you do super instant or something mm -hmm. else it yeah it might be a few seconds at least or uh, or a few minutes so i don't think at this so at this point in time that's really a differentiator but yeah of course suppose that the, the altcoin trading heats up it, it, it might be useful in the future uh, yeah mm. yeah i i ask because i um i'm just totally obsessive about like um responsiveness at the command line so like when you, you know, do something like, like this, <laughs> you know, it's not doing any RPC calls or whatever. And it's, and I think that's taking, you know, half a second, which is like just over the threshold of you know, mm -hmm. making me hate something. And, uh, uh, you know, whereas like, you know, that's just instantaneous. It's native code, right? You got to spin up a VM, et cetera. Um, and uh, the, um, but the thing is that like these days, like, like, like the VM is not the problem. You can, you can get like basically sub hundred millisecond um, when when it's doing nothing. It's just a main method that says hello world, right? Um, mm -hmm. The CLI parsing and the annotation processing, and reflection and stuff like that already adds a couple of, couple hundred milliseconds. And then I was surprised to find um, that uh, when there is an RPC call in the mix, like boom, like all of a sudden you're dealing with you know a full extra second at least. Um, and I thought, hmm, it doesn't doesn't quite make sense. So I haven't I haven't like I'm seems like I'm doing the simplest thing possible, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I would be shocked if that's somehow a baked in you know um, uh, uh, floor of, of of how fast these things can be, because I'm not really concerned with um, like yeah when you're in sort sort of a trading flow and so on. I mean, Bisca's the opposite of 
you know, high frequency stuff. So, so yeah. totally agreed on all those fronts. But if you think about what this CLI can be, and this is actually like a good opportunity to just talk a little bit more about the, the picture that I have of it and for it is like, if you really imagine that the BISC CLI can over time be an increasingly complete uh, interface to everything in BISC, you could imagine like scripting the CLI to, to do, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Like I can't think of a super good example here, but stuff that could drive you nuts if you had like that kind of latency, right? Um, so, but again, this isn't like a super good illustration of the, of the example that I'm talking about, but, um, but if you imagine what could be there as subcommands, right? You know, get subcommands proliferate, right? What could be there as BISC subcommands? Um, you know, I have like account here and, and when I wrote the word account, I meant in the sense of like payment accounts, like we set up national currency accounts, stuff like that in BISC. And right now when you run it, it's just this hard coded thing, right? You know, the names of your accounts. But if you think about that kind of like get remote, um, you know, show, right? Like what remotes do I have set up here? That's sort of the same uh, modality that I'm thinking about here. Like, okay, get account show, so, you know, some, the name of whichever one it is, you know, my SAPA accounts, et cetera. And, you know, and then you, this is all just read only stuff, but this would be, you know, you're just drilling down into and making little, little tweaks and little tunings, right? Sorry, not get the disk. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, uh, get your bisque config, uh, you know, and then that kind of, you know, like sort of dotted syntax, like, you know, withdrawal fee minimum or something like that equals one Satoshi per byte, right? Like, uh, just, just like literally you can, anything you can do in BISC, like as the theoretical goal, anything you can do in the BISC UI, you can also do at the command line. And if we, if we set out on that, you know, uh, on that mission to kind of like ch sort of change our perspectives about how we develop this, we could spend a lot more time in core alone, right? And not really have to worry about desktop, but let things sort of bubble up to desktop <coughs> um, and, and let things be more asynchronous and so on. But like we have an idea for some new functionality, we build it in core, we expose it through gRPC, we exercise that gRPC endpoint through the CLI, and there we have, we have a, round, we have a full round trip, you know, end-to-end -end UI sort of experience that anybody can like go grab that PR, review it, exercise the CLI, say, I get it, you know? And then it's like, it's not like you want these things to be totally separate, but it is, it, it becomes possible to have it be a separate conversation about the desktop. And it doesn't have to be like we wait for, you know, UI code to have to come along. And in the meantime, just sort of like blindly implement stuff, right? Or worse, only get stuff into core by coming from the desktop down. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think uh, so regarding the, yeah, the commands and such, I think if you look at the REST API, it's already a bit in that language. You, you, you already have account um, so wallet mm. and that's so yeah it might not be bad to at least try to align it 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 will probably not be 100 percent possible but uh yeah it would be good to have kind of the same language in both apis yeah exactly i mean so part of the reason i brought up the speed stuff before is is that like in 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 theory so let's, let's assume for a moment that whatever this one second delay thing that I'm talking about j can just go away uh, and that it can just be lightning fast, right? Um, assuming that's true, then it makes sense to me that the, the kind of ideal, I don't know if it's ideal, but this is what comes to mind, is that uh, basically we would have uh, almost like, you know, stubs get generated for whatever language it is that you want. Basically, we would generate a, a, a web interface based on the gRPC definitions. Uh, I don't, don't know if it could be done properly, fully idiomatically, I don't know, maybe somebody else has already done it. Like there might even already be a framework for that given the popularity of gRPC. Um, but the idea being that like when, basically when, when, the, when the REST API needs something and it really is 
already becoming this like serious consumer, right? Like, I mean, the the Ionic app is doing a lot of stuff, right? And it needs to talk to it talks through the rest of, to, through the web API to do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so as web clients need stuff that gets sort of pushed down into the, into the web API and we say, well, we don't have like assuming that we're not going directly to the job API, but, but we're exercising gRPC. That's just pushing requirements into uh, the core gRPC API. And we say like, okay, great. We need a new service definition for this. And, and, and in that way, like assuming that this layering doesn't cause just too much inefficiency uh, mm -hmm. time, time wise, resource wise, et cetera then that seems to me to be the, 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 the ideal thing as opposed to having two sort of parallel developed, you know, bespoke APIs that are always going to be like just a little different than each other and, and, and are going to have kind of their own idiosyncrasies and stuff like that. Um, I'd rather that there's just one API to rule them all, right? And that, and that web stuff gets exported from it. If it's practical, uh, reasonable to do it, I really haven't looked into it. Yeah, I agree. That's best to have just one uh, interface that is a gateway to, to the logic uh, than to have multiple things. Yeah, well, I'm, it, yeah the, the main issue is, is it possible to do that, of course. Uh, but yeah, there is, of course, also a middle solution where you generate the gRPC Java bindings and then the REST API just uses those. Uh, then okay you're still duplicating the work but um yeah that's in case that the grpc can provide us the binding that we need uh, I, well i think that's what i meant what, what what did i miss there because you would be talking to java stubs grpc generated java stubs in in the oh i see as opposed to like like fully generating yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So in the absence of some sort of framework that like literally generates, uh, you know, a sort of uh, restish uh, uh, service definitions, you know, mm -hmm. using JAXRS or whatever, um, in the absence of that, then yeah, you would code it yourself, but you'd be coding against the, the stubs that are, the Java stubs that are generated, right? Yeah, but um, I think probably the, the natural way forward is that we try to reduce our BISC proxy size by refactoring Java, the, the, the Java API in, in BISC, and then once, once our BISC proxy is almost also empty, we can just replace it by gRPC calls if the gRPC is, is already. Exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, as I understand it, um, you know, I haven't, haven't studied what you guys have done deeply, so forgive me if I miss something, but um, the, what I would love to see is just, um, you know, sort of endpoint by endpoints or, you know, request by request, however you sort of have things broken down in the, in the RPC, or sorry, in the web API. Uh, and you have this, you know, this proxy that's kind of the glue code holding it all together, that, you, that you're taking just you're, you're, you're just refactoring one piece at a time and, and coming and saying like, okay, let's go do whatever, whatever the right thing is again, encapsulated into a, you know, a, a proper service that's sort of owned by core, uh, uh, which of course means also refactoring it like at the desktop level, right? So desktop starts to consume that thing. Now, um, uh, at that point, the, the web API, could consume that service directly, right? Like just through normal Java calls yeah. and, and so on. But ideally, the, the process would be abstract the, the POJO service, uh, refactor desktop appropriately, also create the gRPC service around it and consume that from the web yeah. API and then repeat, 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 repeat. And I think this would be a, a, just a, a, a very good way to build out the, the initial uh, uh, gRPC service, and, and I guess, and actually, what what we could be doing in parallel, maybe this is starting to sound really good, is that if you guys are doing that with the web API, uh, and then I'm kind of following along, like mm -hmm. assuming that I can uh, get get in here and actually have some quality time to do this, it's super important to me. And I'm kind of following along and also building it out with CLI, 
Mm -hmm. Right. And, and in that way, like, like now I have to really look at what you've done and really think about, okay, does it make sense from this other context as well? Did we do something that's actually kind of like a weirdly shaped thing really just for the web API, blah, blah, blah. Right. But we can get the abstraction right, you know, by having at least a couple contexts consuming it. And then we can all just really work together. And, and along the way we would build this common mindset about like really how should these service definitions be cut up and, and abstracted and, what are our requests and responses, objects look like, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be very worthwhile if you could follow with your gRPC hat on and follow the refactorings and maybe help if it's possible. And then, yeah, it, it will always be better if you have two consumers and uh, if you have one. Yeah. I um, just, um, I'm, just one second, I got a little notice from... Uh, from Zoom here, I'm just checking how much time I have. I guess we still have like 10 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. um, there is, so one more, yeah, for the gRPC, I just quickly, so I looked and there are other people who are also c c complaining, so, so it's probably more a, st a startup as an issue. So the first time you start up, he makes some threads, he allocates some memory, so, it's probably for the the REST API usage, it would maybe not be an issue because then you started up once and we continue to use it's, it. It's long running, yeah. Yeah, yeah for the command line, it <coughs> might remain an issue, so. Uh, yeah, exactly, I figured that might be it too. Um, <coughs> yeah, exactly, so we can solve that at the CLI with a, with a REPL or something like that. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay, so, so how, how are you guys doing for time now? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay too. Uh, <laughs> like twelve percent of battery, but okay, yeah, cool. Um, so, what would be helpful for me? Um, I I did uh, look through your deck, um, Bernard, and and maybe that'll come in handy here. Um, but it was it's a little bit low level for uh, for actually the kind of higher level question that that I wanted to ask first anyway, which is. Um, like I, I totally get what has caused the creation of uh, this proxy, right? You're just, you're just, you know, sort of doing a, a poor man's version of, you know, the abstractions that you need that aren't actually there, right? Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. Um, what I'm not so clear about, and this is just from from lack of quality time to really do it myself, is like what is the like, could you just say in the simplest language possible, like explain it like I'm five from your perspective, what is the challenge, what, what, what are the barriers to running BISC headlessly right now? Um, yeah, and let's just start that. Yeah, I can answer that. So um, the problem is that, uh, as you can see on the diagram. Uh, uh, actually, you're not sharing your screen yet. I, I won't share it, so if you could probably uh, load the uh, presentation. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I'm on the mobile. Yeah, so there's like a lot of uh, steps that need to be done to start the application. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them happen inside the UI code. Uh, so yeah, you can go to the uh, yeah, execution order. Uh, so first there's like set default locale, remove the restrictions, check security policy, set up the thread executor, uh, and uh, then, then we're parsing the um, options from the command line. Uh, then uh, we need to init persistent data hosts, so load the uh, configuration from the hard drive. Uh, then UI must start before uh, the basic services, at least the peer-to-peer, service before it starts because um, uh, basically the, the UI is uh, it's calling this start method and it's passing the, the listener so if the uh, if for example you would start the core uh, this peer-to-peer -peer service before UI manages to attach the, mm -hmm. mm, the listener it then the UI would miss the event that for example peer-to-peer -peer service is, is ready, and we would be hanging on this first uh, uh, first screen uh, that it would show, be showing the, how it's rolling. So 
that was like uh, the most painful thing. Uh, but I've managed to, to refactor it a bit uh, and it works. Mm, so, mm, and, and where are those, where are those refactored changes? Is that stuff that's actually gotten in or you have it locally somewhere? No, 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 no. It's, it's just pushed to my fork. Okay. Uh, yeah, it needed to uh, refactor inside, uh, at least the desktop, probably core. Uh, yeah. And the desktop was the, the, the hardest part because you know, this BISC app is being, uh, the class is passed to just as a class. We don't instantiate the object, so it's not configured. So we, if we need to uh, uh, provide injector or environment or something else, we need to do it on the static, on the class level. Uh, so that was like, uh, but this is what the um, uh, JavaFX is forcing us to do. Uh, and if you would go uh, to the uh, to the bottom, there are links to the source code. Uh, to the bottom, sorry. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the to the latest, mm. uh, we can go either to latest slide. Here, here is the code, uh, or we could go to the um, to the second slide, and there is the diagram. Uh, I didn't see a diagram actually. Uh, there is, there's a link to diagram. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so basically, in my approach, uh, it, well, it doesn't matter if you will call it API extension or whatever. Uh, you just need to. We, we've got here API, uh, GUI, and core. So first, we need to parse the options, and probably uh, API will have its own options. You will have its own options. Uh, some options are in core, so we need to decorate the parser. Uh, then, uh, well, we need to have some, uh, we need to build the guys module that would include all the all the parts, all the services from API, core, and GUI. So that's what's happening in this construct aggregated module uh, phase. Uh, and uh, well, right now uh, the core is initiating the app directory there. Uh, probably that should be moved out to, be, to happen inside this main class uh, initially. Okay, we can uh, move a bit lower. Then um, there is this setup uncode exception handler. And uh, for example, uh, if we would run in headless mode, then we just need to log to the console. Uh, but if we would run in the uh, UI mode, uh, then UI wants to present the um, uh, a pop up. Uh, so instead of uh, attaching, uh, making the UI attaching uh, the unexpected exception handler, we could uh, j create. Uh, a dedicated singleton service that would mm, that all the extensions like API or GUI or whatever else, they would register themselves as listeners there. And that uh, exception handler would be just propagating those exceptions to all the registered uh, mm, clients. Uh, okay, then we've got the, uh, there's another like uh, step that we need to, um, uh, if you scroll up, scroll up a bit. Um, the setup, right? So we need to uh, initi initiate those persisted data hosts. This is something that happens only inside uh, core right now, but probably just saying that uh, the the dependencies caused by having the listeners attach on time might yeah. be reduced by reactive streams and. Yeah, it's funny that you that you mentioned that. I was just I was thinking about it as we as we were going through the diagram as well. And what you might not know is that we actually had our Java in the mix um, years ago. I've heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's and it's I I never I never blamed Manfred for backing it out because it's one of these things where like I mean yeah. I guess as you know right like the sort of 
head shift that you have to do is like non-trivial to get that right. Yeah, it has some learning curve. But the problem, the problem is, is that it has f fucking real applications. <laughs> like, like this is you know potentially one of them. I mean, there's multiple ways to achieve the same kind. Mm. But, um, but I would be so. So let me like. Um, this is great, 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 Bernard. That you put all this together. I super appreciate it. I'll just tell you what my anxieties are here, and like we can find ways to solve this i'm sure because it's it's clear it's evidently clear that like you, you guys know sort of what needs to be done how things need to be sequenced and all that stuff like better than me right i haven't been in this code for like literally years and and what what my um uh, concerns are here is that is that the way that all of bisque's set up and injection code has has grown over the years is like I'll, I'll generously call it uh, organic growth <laughs> right mm -hmm. uh, like, like when I when I first dug into that stuff um, however long ago um, you know I did a big pass of, of sort of refactoring all the juice modules and and getting things into a shape that you know, sort of made some sense and, and there was some regularity to it and, and so on. And, and I think what's happened in the, in the meantime is there's been just sort of cargo cult programming, right? You know, it's just like, uh, okay, we need to have this module and needs to have this service and needs to, you know, get bound like this. And so there's never been sort of a, like a deep, um, uh, 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 understand is probably unfair, right? Obviously, people understand how it works, but like, there hasn't been a, a, a sort of design. I don't know, like, just really deep sort of knowledge about, like, you know, how should things be done here? I think driving has just been like, just get the next thing done. I think for literally years. And so mm -hmm. my concern is 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 that we would come in to like to start to break this stuff up and. And, and so on without really addressing the underlying structural issues of mm -hmm. just like, what the fuck is Juice doing here? <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, like, like, I get into this code like I was so frustrated before this call today because mm -hmm. I had a better version of the demo that I wanted to show you that didn't have the daemon uh, submodule involved. And, you know, it actually just like on the desktop side, I had, you know, like just enough gRPC stuff happening um, uh, uh, in, in sort of just the right place in, in, in desktop land. And that was the much better thing to show because like I could actually show you the gRPC sort of wrapping the code that does the calculation of my balance, right? And, mm -hmm. and I could not get the goddamn service to start because, because I couldn't figure out the right thing to do with juice. And it's like, mm -hmm. and this is just like screaming evidence to me that something's wrong here. And I don't think that it's that I don't understand dependency injection well enough. Like, it's like it's like okay stop stop this is madness like like what i would love to do is to just completely rethink the sort of configuration time bootstrap time injection time architecture of BISC. it's probably a bit of a big ask right but i do think a little bit of that needs to happen if we're going to do anything like what we're talking about in the sequence diagram or further modularizing or or whatever because i do not want to add sort of uh, attempt to add good code on top of what is essentially bad. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that's that's the anxiety. And 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 if I just had you know infinite time, I'd be like, oh, no problem. I'll just go put my head down for a week and come up with you know sort of what I think the answer is and get it validated from from other people. This is just not really practical. I'm probably not going to do that. Um, so, so I don't know. I'm 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 open. Like I'm I'm open. I'm like super open conceptually. Like mm -hmm. I actually don't see. Juice was, Juice was a design decision that came in be, um, before I got involved, I think. Like, Juice was already there. And, and, it, and it makes sense, right? Like, Juice is, like, lighter weight in many ways than Spring, so it's mm -hmm. all fine. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. I, I, would probably, I would probably do it differently uh, these days. I mean, I, I probably would bring Spring into the mix. I probably actually would bring the Spring container into the mix um, in... Uh, in uh, core and desktop because uh, you know like like the spring container takes you know uh, uh, takes a beat to start up right you know you're not getting like millisecond you know like like less than 10 millisecond startup times like you're talking you know you're gonna approach like 
250, 500 milliseconds for, for Spring Container to start up to do anything. It's not at all a problem uh, for this desktop or core, right? That's not going to be like the limiting factor there with Tor involved and so on. Um, and what you get out of uh, 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 spring is just it's just it's just so much better obviously I'm like the most biased person on the planet but uh, but it's like like I'm always just running into stuff with with, with juice which is just like oh god how do they do this and you know, there's always an answer in spring that's just like rich and robust mm -hmm. all tested and, and all that yeah. stuff you don't have to do things for so I don't know I'm, I'm super open I'm not gonna like push mm -hmm. and advocate that we rip out all the guts and, and do all of that but like like, mm -hmm. I definitely want some conversation and some approach to happen that just says that we don't mm -hmm. build on top of stuff we know we don't like. Yeah, well, I think there are a few answers to that. First of all, I'm also a bit, uh, yeah, juice is nice if it's also a bit small and simple, but once it begins to become complicated, yeah. I don't like it that much either. Uh, spring container, I don't know. Uh, Bring the dependency injection is indeed a lot better, but um, I think uh, the the biggest problem with this will be organizational. It will be, yeah, you can't go away for a month and then present the big bang refactoring because yeah, then uh, people will yeah, it, it's probably not the way to do it. So we probably I need to put together a proposal on how to refactor it. And then also I have had the time, eh? the people time to do it because uh, it will break a lot of things and it will take probably a month to do it. So uh, I don't know how you see that, Chris, but I think uh, doing this b b before doing the proposal is probably not a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there, so I, I don't have any strong feelings, really. It's, it's, I, the only strong feeling that I have is that I just, I, it, it's, and it's really just this. I just wanted to say out loud, there's nothing mm -hmm. about the existing sort of crap infrastructure that's somehow like, that's the thing we love, right? No, no, not necessarily at all, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, don't assume anything when, don't, don't assume that it has to be this way, and then add something on top of it that actually yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like further yeah. compromising. Yeah. I think we lost the this, this cell phone. Uh, at then. Yeah, well, that was much long, longer than we thought. I actually yeah. just have 5% uh, myself as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I think it was a good first talk, but I think, yeah, the for, for us now, we're going to, to, to finish the REST API so that uh, people that people can use it but then the next task is the refactoring and i, I think that's the next big big thing to to discuss then yeah so if i if i were spending if i were going to dig into this um mm -hmm. uh, and, and to whatever degree i have this is what i've tried to do i just haven't gotten in well mm -hmm. is i would just just completely try to forget about desktop Mm -hmm. And the and, and the goal is there is a main method in this core that brings up a complete this core, right? That's necessary for you know, the sort of BISC-D mode, right? And then, of course, what will be discovered is that there's probably like tons of shit happening in desktop that actually needs to get pushed down into core or just otherwise refactored. And so like like I like I wouldn't want to see any any big bang, this changes the whole world um, sort of, you know. PR or, or set of PRs, mm -hmm. be like, what does it take to, to, to bootstrap this core on its own mm -hmm. in, like, in the most brutally minimal way imaginable? And then, you know, uh, okay, well, wh what implications does it have for, for desktop and, and so on? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that Manfred is also quite um, afraid of, yeah, the, because there are a few timing timing issues probably in the in the UI, so he's afraid that that the refactoring will 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 probably break that. So um, we have to be also cautious about that. Yeah. Uh, so so in terms of in terms of how to to go about it, um, 
uh, and I'm really, my battery's really going to die here soon. So I probably just have a couple of minutes, but, um, but you mentioned a proposal I should, I should mention here. I, I, I actually intend to, to, um, rework a little bit the whole sort of proposals, uh, approach. Like I actually, I think how we've been using proposals in actual practice is, is, is the way we should, right. Which is basically people are adding issues and saying like, Hey, what if we did this thing this way instead of that way? It's like, essentially changing the way we work together and stuff like that. What I don't think has worked so well is this idea of, of BIPs for BISC mm -hmm. uh, per se, right? And I know I you know, sat on your HDP API one forever. Sorry about that. But, um, <laughs> but I think that it's uh, um, the problem with it is, is that we're just, we're just simply not at that level of maturity as a, as a, protocol driven project we're, we're actually not that protocol driven even though there is an implicit protocol so you sort of can't really come along and so easily make changes i think a good example it's sort of the best example that we've seen so far is manfred's um uh, account age witness proposal yeah. that he put together i mean that, that's that's that really was kind of like close that, that was basically bisque's version of protocol level thinking mm -hmm. so i think that's all fine but i just don't I don't, I don't think we're sort of in the place where it makes sense to do BIPs on like, on like further reviews. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is um, wh where, where it makes sense to actually write a spec like that or, or an RFC or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think we can put that stuff in, in this new docs, you know, sort of or the existing docs repository that maybe saw, you know, there's now, now actually a website for it yeah. um, as of yesterday. Uh, and we can have, you know, specs that we're putting together and looking for, for comments on just sort of like living with all other docs in a well-organized way. But when it comes to proposals, it, it, we don't think about it so much as like, here's this like formal written proposal that I've done, but rather proposals are issues where you, you know, do some clear thinking, you do write, right? Like motivation and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You get comments on it, you get rough consensus and you move forward. So the line between, sorry, if my battery dies, I'll just quickly go away here. But the line between um, uh, a PR and a, and, a, and a proposal, I think, is a, is a fine line, right? Like, you could just put together a PR and submit it and say, like, what if we did it this way? But if it's going to be, like, so contentious and there's, like, so many open questions about it, then, it, yeah. then yeah, it might make sense to just do a proposal issue and say like, here's what I'm thinking about. Anybody want to shoot holes in this before I yeah. waste the time to do a PR? Is, is, I, is this kind of what you had in mind? Yeah, I think <coughs> it's just that we need a common document or for an issue to. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still here. I just killed my video to save that. Yeah, we 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 just need something to do a rough other outline saying okay, mm -hmm. we about this and this and this and. And I also think it's the, it's the first time that there will be three or four people intensely interested in the outcome of the of the thing. So maybe yeah. there will be more interaction and more feedback. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's right. So I mean, it, it it probably is the right thing to do. My my concern is like I just like I really much prefer having conversations in code. Like, because mm -hmm. it's just like it works or it doesn't. You you find flaws in it or it doesn't, and it gets merged or it doesn't, right? And what I don't want to do is like, mm -hmm. if we can avoid it, I don't want to have like lots of bike shedding conversations and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure nobody does, right? Um, no, but I think it's yeah. it's probably good if you say, okay, okay, we're going to try try to do it with Spring and this and that, mm -hmm. and then if so, no more subjects, you go and try it out. That's a, uh, that, that's a lot of time saved uh, than if you say we, we're going to use Spring and this and that and someone says, no, I don't want you to do that because of this and this. Yeah. Okay, then, 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 you've, then you've just written 10 lines of text and you've saved a few hours. Uh, yes, ex exactly, right. And it's like, like and if somebody come, came along and said, Let, let's do it with Spring, uh, mm -hmm. And like my pushback would be like, well, do what, right? And like, like it's really useful to have those conversations. Is like, please, like, let, like let there be a, some sort of like measurable outcome of this, or like, what is the goal? And to me, the goal is like 
I want to see this core running with this desktop completely out of the picture, right? Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. if your proposal doesn't produce that, like if you're not moving toward a PR that produces that, then my guess is you're doing too much or you're just plain doing the wrong thing at this level, mm -hmm. right? So isolate this core and, 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 and probably honestly, like that doesn't require any change of anything. Right, like framework wise, like well, no, yeah. just like just keep, just keep the whole thing in the mix, and just what does it take, like sort of per Bernard's uh, sequence diagrams or whatever. What do you have to rejigger to mm -hmm. to get this core running headlessly, and then let's talk again, and then let's see about okay, well, what's the right thing to do? And so so yeah, be, like before changing any frameworks, before like plugins or extensions or like different modularization approaches. Like mm -hmm. just get this core running headlessly. I, I mean, does that does that sound right? Like, if you think about the, the issues that you guys have run into, and like what's relevant to you, would would that be a sort of next step to take? Yeah, that's it. yeah. Well, he's back. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah, I said that exactly. That's what we need to do: make oh. the uh, BISC run headlessly. Uh, Without without the desktop. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So so let me so let me just offer this to to, to everybody then because th this is starting to sound really attractive. Is um, who whoever can put together, and, and I mean, a, a proposal would be fine, right? Like, hey, everybody, this is what we plan to do. Just as kind of a heads up, that would be great. But like, whoever can put together a pull request that achieves that goal that that has a main method in it that allows this core to, to be to, to, to run on its own and like it's it's actually fully up and running now it won't be able to do anything because it doesn't have any any api hooks in it yet but it is like there and you can analyze the logs and you can see that everything happened right whoever submits that pull request for i will fucking merge that pull request <laughs> and, then, and then we can have the next conversation because that's exactly what i need if i'm going to take any next steps with grpc that's what I need. That's that's what I haven't had the time to do myself. And so it sounds like a good starting point. Awesome. Uh, well, I've got I've got a code ready, but it requires changes in uh, several modules. Yeah. So in, inside in the desktop, in the uh, in the core, and probably in the common. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so okay, but in fairness, in fairness, you could you could submit the PR like, like it, obviously the desktop PR doesn't have to be merged, right? So you could like, and I want us to get a little bit more into this mode. We're so in this mode of like making multiple PRs and everything's in sync, which is like good for obvious reasons. But it's also like when we're doing something experimental, uh, when we're just looking for early validation, then like just forget about it right i mean like I, there's some fine balance and i don't i don't want to say completely forget about it because it's good to think about the downstream effects but you also don't have to go get it completely right it's like is this the right thing to do from core and down uh on, on sort of the, its own basis as a you know just print principled sort of coding thinking then okay desktop can adapt right um I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do, do, do it as you like, but but I, I basically just want to see something that that makes the situation in core better and makes yeah. it able to to run on its own. So are you proposing to to merge it into as a master because I think a few people will probably be unhappy. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. What I'm saying is, yeah. So so if if we saw that PR. It, like it obviously couldn't be merged unless there were a, a, a joint PR for desktop for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but just to see that PR first and to be able to kind of analyze that and talk mm -hmm. about that, that, that's all I mean. So what I, what I, my whole point here, and I said it very badly is like, don't waste too much time. On